while we decided to make another stop while we were in Chattanooga, we have came to the Towing Museum here in Chattanooga. We've been here before too, but we decided to come back and take another look, see if they've got anything new inside. And we're gonna start out here with the Wall of the Fallen, dedicated to the men and women who have lost their lives in the line of duty in the towing industry. So we'll take a look at this monument here first. It's pretty cool there. And then here they've got um, names along the wall of ones that have been lost in the line of duty in the towing and record industry. So we're gonna head on inside. This is a picture of us and our kids in 2006 at the Towing Museum. Okay, we made it inside and just like every other event these days they do have a gift shop now i don't think this was here when we came so we're just waiting on the video to finish up they start you out with with that now before you go into the museum take a look here at tater tot it says barnett's towing Little towing outfits for kids. We should have got Charlie and Devin one of those when they were riding around in the records with us. Didn't see those back then though. With a better understanding and appreciation of the incredible towing and recovery industry, Chattanooga plays a key role in the story of the towing industry. It is the birthplace of the tow truck. It all started in 1960. A man by the name of John White flipped his Model T into the Chickamauga Creek. Word quickly spread to Ernest Holmes Sr., a local mechanic who was eager to take on the challenge. Holmes, along with eight other men, spent the entire day recovering Mr. Wiley's vehicle. With ropes, bricks, wood beams, and grit, the men were able to complete the recovery. This experience stuck with Ernest Sr. He put his creative mind to work. Over the next two years of late nights and countless prototypes, Ernest secured a patent in January 1918. His invention was the first of its kind, a split boom record. This unique concept was built on the theory that an operator could anchor the truck on one side and recover a vehicle on the other as to not tip the record. Holmes used the sleek 1913 locomobile to mount his hand-cranked split boom. The design worked wonderfully, and he began production on the Holmes 485 the first commercially available tow truck ever built. Holmes actively began marketing and selling his invention. He advertised the records as an asset to capture more business. In fact, it wasn't rare for him to receive personal letters from customers raving about their new record. We know it's the most satisfactory addition to our plant that we've made since we've been in business. Throughout his career, Ernest Sr. patented nearly a dozen improvements to aid the industry, leaving a lasting legacy. He was a classic American inventor and entrepreneur and fought his way through the depression to build an enduring company. All right, we have watched the movie here, so we're gonna head inside to the museum. Check out the trucks. Oh, this one is a 1913. This one's a 1913 also. It's a Cadillac with a home 680 on it.
Check out the booms on some of these that I can get close to. Many of you know we had a towing company for about 25 years or a little longer. So, like the video said, towing is in your blood. That's true. This is a 1935 Ford with a three-ton weaver crane on it. Looks like it's from Illinois. And I like this one here, a 48 Chevrolet with a Holmes 515 on it. Thomas had 23 and a half hour towing on our trucks. He said we at least needed a half hour of sleep a day. Sometimes we didn't get that. <laughs> Not bad summer blue on 41. He said this one is similar to what we've got on our 41 wrecker. It automatically lets up, but you got to manually crank it back down. It's got a torque converter in the front of it, one way torque converter. Oh, manual, hey? Yeah. And we owned a rare bed and didn't know it. It was called a Sherlock bed. It was based upon like the home setup, but the name of it was manufactured by Sherlock. But not to be confused with Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, not to be confused with Sherlock no. Holmes. But at the time, not knowing what it was, we just mounted it. The booms are still around. They're at a friend of mine's house in Social Circle. But the bed itself was set up a little different than the home's bodies were. But as far as the trees and the winches and all like that, it looked just like a home's bed. Well, let me get the front of this one while this one's turned facing me, and then I'll go get the front of that white one there. T-bar goes on right here. Just so slip behind along. That way, if it gets away from you, it won't break your arm. But that's how you you manually crank it up. There was no PTO involved. So this white one here is a 29 Packard with a three-ton manly crane. That's a good name for it, manly. This is an auto car here with a Holmes uh, bed on it. We had a 79, still have it, but it's just not in Tennessee yet. 79 Kenworth Wrecker. We had, yeah, home 750. Here's a picture of our 79 KW we call the Blue Mule. We got an 81 Chevrolet record with a home 600 on the back of it. And we got the 80 model C30 with the home 440 high power. And we got a 71 Chevrolet with a home um, 440. We've still got Big Bird. Yeah, that's the, the yellow, that's the 750. Record. I mean, that's the 440 home top out. We don't operate all these. We were in business years ago. We had land alls. 
road tractors, heavy, medium, light duty wreckers. We ran them all. Our kids grew up with us in our shop and riding on record calls with us and helping on record calls. But due to health reasons, we had to sell out and quit. Got rid of all the hydraulic stuff and kept all the old manual stuff because I figured one day it'd be rare. And it's getting that way. This is a 52 Ford with a 460 Holmes. There's a Diamond T. 1943. Most of the Holmes trucks had a tube that goes from the bottom to the top. <clears throat> That's what your trees tunnel off of. And when I did this here, this put structural stress back here in the middle of the axles. That way it was supposed to help the traction instead of rear in the front of the truck up. That was the earlier additions. After that, they just went to a kicker. I'd like to drive that one around. Run, That's okay. I'm old. I don't like going fast no more. There's a 1974 Ford with a Vulcan cradle snatcher on it. You need to pick that up by the front tires and sling the vehicle. Oh yeah, we've had repo trucks with the uh, remote control wheel lifts on them. I drove that just that every day. That's my daily driver. I loved it. Picked the kids up from school. They never knew which tow truck I was going to be pulling up in. All their kids thought it was awesome. All their friends, I'm sorry. All their friends thought it was awesome. And some of the friends got to ride in them too. Yeah. In parades. We had a big wrecker bigger than this one. And we put it in parades. Had one that got stolen. We restored it from the ground up and it got stolen right after we got it restored. Never was to be seen again. But we used to let um our kids' friends ride in parades with us and homecoming football parades. It's had a lot of fun. Go around that way, catch front truck. Here's a Holmes Model 110. Oh, it says you can take a picture in that one. You have to get a picture in that one. You think you can, look, you think you can get in there? I'd like to see you get in that one. I can. I'll take your picture in it. Okay. I don't want a video, I just want a picture. You gotta jump in it like we're going on a record for. Come on, quicker than that. You got 30 minutes to respond. Come on. Going on a record call. Oh, record call? Yeah. You got 30 minutes to respond, so you gotta jump in and go. Okay. There you go, Hollywood.
welchen Schritt kann ich nicht Was ist denn der Hub? Ist der ein Chevy oder ein Chevy? Der Reifer gehabt, ich habe schon die Gabel nicht mehr Chevy. Ach, dann ist das der Schlag. New Jersey. Nineteen twenty nine Chevrolet with a three ton manly crane. Like I said, those are the ones you gotta man manually crank up. And there's another one like flatbed right there. They had steel bars that you drive in the ground. I used to have them out here on display. And um, you would take and drive them in the ground. That's how you got your counter lever to winch with. And then you pull them up with your truck when you got done with the winch. Like I said, I miss doing this kind of stuff, but health reasons says no. So, got to do what your body says. But I still got the trucks to play with, though. Guess you can say it's my, my big hot wheel collection. We still got roll bikes and stuff. trucks and nice carved out as I get done with the CNC machine that wasn't hand done. We got a nice toy collection of records with all the shapes and sizes and year models. Pretty cool. And everything's about the same as it was last time we came. Two more wooden ones. That's just two by four there, somebody made. That's pretty cool. Screw washers to the side out. Yeah, can I keep it in the house because it's a bit of 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 a bit so that gives us a head. Even plates go in there, Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Record Museum. Right down from the interstate. You can see it from the interstate, matter of fact. Be a cool place to check out.
We've had to do that before. Hook one record to another record to pull another record. Everybody kind of looks at you like you're crazy. Got your own parade going on. Speaking of crazy. Hey, welcome to the crazy show. And you're a host. Of different eras. I think I think that'll grow to something that was a little bit more than what it wanted to handle. I don't know if you can see it through the glare or not. It kind of been having to bad day at work. We picked up some cars that look like that before. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen some, some horrible scenes. Stuff. Very, very sad situations. Don't miss those parts of it. No, I don't miss that stuff at all. You get the thing on stuff like that, and it kind of gets under you, under your skin a little bit. But it was part of the job, so I had no other choice but to do it. There you go. That's what I was talking about. The different riggings and all. There's different tools. That's J Hook Castings, that's how they come out of the mold. And then they shear the excess metal off and that's how you that's what you buy. Still ain't got the spikes I was talking about. You stick them up under the back of a car, turn it into a wagon, or up under the front of it, stick it in the axle, and hook it to the back of your record if it was axles was tore up my front. Old car machines. Patch where you put a patch on the tire, you stick the tire in on a roller and put two red arms in and spread it apart. Oh, you put your patch on the inside of it. I'm going to start using our bags. G electric arc welder from the 1950s. And some more sun equipment, that's a distributor tester. Different fuel cans and grease cans. Back in the day, that's how you used to receive your dispatch calls. It was a cell phone, or it looked like, I mean, not a cell phone. It was a counter phone, but it didn't have the dial in the middle of it. It just had a speaker. And that's how they would dispatch you. The phone would ring. You'd hear them dispatch over the radio, and your phone would ring and tell you to show up to the wreck. I don't see none of the 
wedges I was talking about. That's different airbags, catch bag, lift bags, and catch bags. And they're flat like that. You hook them to that valve body, hook them to an air compressor, and you, whichever bag you wanted to lift off of, you'd open the valve on it, and you can inflate each bag different pressures, and that would lift, and the flat bags turned into that inflated bag right there, and then you had catch bags, which is similar to this tan one, and you blow it up. And as the vehicle come over on top of it, it gently let it lowered it over instead of it just flipping over. And different bodies that are set up on the basis of this is set up on the basis of 440 homes. And this is set up on the basis of a 480 home with the split trees, but they just run it into one system. They don't have split trees, they only have one. Record master towing swing. That's like the orange rucker. Or the same body style. It's pretty cool. International hydraulic bed, aren't Much better for us. Yates towing. Hillsboro towing. Hey, we got a Dixie towing sticker. Dixie custom <laughs> sticker. We'll sticker slap it. Yeah. Not on video in here. When we first started off, we started off coming for the federal government. For any, any of the federal agencies, um, DEA, IRS, they were seized vehicles, and then we got into doing overstock vehicles where the government, different. Um, Entities of the government would have vehicles they wouldn't use and we'd take them to Atlanta to the auction, to be auctioned off. And then we got out of that and we got our DOT number issued to us in, I don't know, 95, something like that. 96. And then we started towing for the public or started towing state patrol and county and for a long time we used just the old f450 with aluminum ingram bed on the back of it which ingram don't even exist no more i don't believe but we had it and then we had the yellow uh wrecker to come out of atlanta it was dot yellow And we did all kind of crazy stuff with it. We pulled 18 wheelers, whatever it took to make a dollar. That's what we did. It's part of the reason my body's in the shape it's in from doing stupid crap that I shouldn't have never done. But that's beside the point.
It was fun while it lasted. Oh, Indian Road Service. Motorcycle. Dispatch tow. They were taking push the car. With the front bumper with that push push bar right there. <laughs> and this is your big truck wheel dollars here. You stick eighteen wheeler. You can see the picture. But sometimes they didn't fare too well because the weight of the truck just couldn't they couldn't maintain. But that's the Wrecker Museum. We figured we would watch that for y'all. A little bit of back history on us, a little bit of entertainment too. So let me go find my narrator and we'll head on out. And go see if we can stumble upon something else that might interest y'all. All right, that's y'all a little piece of history and a little bit of knowledge about us. So we're going to go find something else to do and we'll bring y'all some more videos. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend. Leave a comment. We'd like to hear from y'all. Thanks for watching. Check out our second channel, Dixie Customs Extra. We'll have some outtake videos on it coming soon. Appreciate it. Here's a couple of clips of the tow trucks we used to operate. Y'all be sure to check out the second channel at DC Customs Extra for more pictures.